All right, now that we have discussed all of the properties that exist in a parallelogram, today we are going to look at a concept where we show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we're trying to prove it's a parallelogram based on its properties, um, but we are not starting knowing it's a parallelogram. Okay, so that's the important difference between what we did in the prior section and this one. All right, we have many ways to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And all of these ways, with the exception of one new one, are the very same properties that we used if we already knew it was a parallelogram. Okay, so what I mean is, if you look at number one. Okay, if we can show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. Okay, so if I'm provided a shape where I can prove that these sides are parallel and those sides are parallel, I can say, yes, it's a, it is a parallelogram, okay? I don't know they're parallel to start with. I'm trying to give reasoning using theorems to prove it's parallel. Okay, number two, if I can show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. Now, these theorems, don't worry about these name, these numbers. Okay, they don't mean anything. Um, I do want you to notice that we, if we can prove the definition, then it is a parallelogram. Um, number three, if we can show both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. I'm gonna skip four for a minute, that's the new one. Number five, if we can show that the diagonals bisect each other. So if I can show the diagonals cut each other in half, it, they're congruent on either side, um, then it's a parallelogram. There is one missing. So the one I would like you to add is about the consecutive angles. So if we can show that one angle, show that one angle is supplementary We can show that one angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. Consecutive angles. So if we can show that one angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles, then we know it's a parallelogram. Okay, let's come back to number four here. The new one is... If we can show that one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel, so look at this diagram here. If you can show that one side, one set of opposite sides has both properties, that's sufficient to prove it's a parallelogram. So we don't really use this rule if we know it's a parallelogram because it kind of overlaps with the others. But this is an important rule to show that a random quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So many of our answers today are just going to be phrases or sentences on how, which theorem are we tying back to. Okay, number one, let's identify or we're trying to explain how do you know that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram? Okay, so I am trying to quote one of these six rules. Okay, so here's what I see. Um, I see um, 113 and 67 are consecutive angles. Um, what do they add up to? 113 plus 67. Okay, I'm getting 180. Um, so I see that these two consecutive angles and those two are supplementary. So I can quote the one we wrote up here. By showing our math over here, we have just shown that one angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. So that's my answer here. That's my explanation. One angle is supplementary One angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. Now, you, your first thought may have been, well, I can say that opposite angles are congruent, but I can't for sure because the rule up here is I need to show that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Um, what's the measure of this angle right here? I don't have a number. 
So I could calculate it, okay? I see four angles. All four angles add up to 360 degrees because it's a quadrilateral. So if I did the math, if I took 360, take away both 113s, take away 67, I would calculate 67. Then I could say that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. But without that extra step, I can't use that rule. Okay, number, or actually letter B here. Um, how do I know that's a parallelogram? Okay, I see the same expression. That means these two have to be the same length because no matter what I put in place of X, I'm gonna get the same thing. Over here is the same idea. If they're both the same expression, then I'm gonna get the same answer. So my explanation is number five, diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals bisect each other. Okay, I'd like you to try one and two below. Um, I want you to answer similar to what I have here. I want you to write out the phrase, which theorem can be used to show that these quadrilaterals are parallelograms. Okay, number one, um, I've got a set of parallel lines. I have a set of equal sides. So that's the rule that says one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. One pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. Okay. All right, I see on number two, these sides are equal. I see 26 is the same. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Oops, not E on there, I don't know why I did that. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. All right. Well, let's go on. We just have two more examples. Um, and we're going to do some solving here. First one says, for what value of x is quadrilateral FGHJ a parallelogram? Okay, so the information I'm given is I have a set of parallel sides. If I could show that those sides are also equal, I could use the theorem that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So I need to determine what that value of x would be to make them equal. So I'm going to set them equal to each other so I can figure out what that value is. So I'll distribute in over on the right. So 4x plus 8. So I'm going to take away 4x. So that gives me x plus 2 equals 8. And then if I take away 2, x equals 6. All right, so if x was 6, then this is a parallelogram. All right, last one. If a, b, c, d is a parallelogram, find the values of x. Okay, so if it's a parallelogram, I know that these sides are equal. So I am going to put them in an equation. All right, I have x squared and x. I'm gonna have to factor, or I could pop, I could use quadratic formula. But in order to factor, I need zero on one side. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add my 8x over here, and I'm gonna take away 48 as well. So I have now x squared plus 8x minus 48 equals zero. All right, I'm going to go ahead and factor this. If you want to use quadratic formula, we should get the same answer. Okay, um, I am going to guess and check. So because this is a 1, I can look for factors of 48, negative 48, that add up to 8. Okay, so here's kind of how I like to do it. I like to list out my factors from the positive perspective. So 1 and 48, 2 and 24... 3 is, goes into it, um, 4 goes into it as well, 12, I'm going to skip 5, I think 6 works, yeah, 6 and 8. All right, so I like to think, I can make it say negative by making one of these factors negative. 
I like to look for factors that add or subtract to up to 8. Okay, um, let's see. 12 and 4, I can make, say, 8 with some negatives. Make sure none of the others work. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work with 4 and 12. Um, the factor I want negative is the 4 because when I add, that will give me positive 8, and then negative 4 and 12 gives me negative 48. Okay, um, set these separately equal to 0. That's the 0 product property. And then we solve. Add 4. So it looks like I'm getting 4 for an answer. And I'm getting negative 12. Now, they might both work. Let's see. If I plug negative 12 in here, I get a positive 48. When I plug negative 12 in here, negative 8 times negative 12 will make this term positive. That's going to be just fine. Um, how about 4? When I plug a 4 in here, I get a negative 32 and plus 48. That will keep this side positive. So uh, both of them actually will work today. I don't need to throw any of them out. And so there's actually two solutions here. So both of these values of x uh, would make this a parallelogram. Okay, well that wraps up uh, our first day of proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Um, our next lesson will deal with the same topic, 